Now it's time for a rundown of all the tools that I use. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like an auto mechanic never has to take his car in because he can work on himself or work on his own car. Once you understand all of these different tools, you'll never really need to get a massage from somebody else. It's nice. At that point, it's a luxury and uh, it, it's like I love getting worked on, but I don't need to. If I have pain or some kind of uh, hypertension, some kind of knot that's really bugging me, I know how to get to any part of my body. And after this little segment, you will too. So the most important one is this right here. It's called the Body Back Buddy. And uh, Cody's gonna show you how to use this. So <clears throat> the main thing that this is for, there's a bunch of different knobs on it, but I really only use this knob right here 99% of the time. And so she's gonna place this right here on the shoulder like so. And the trick to this, because you, know, it, you, can, you can put right hand right here, and then so she can push against it and that, that, that creates a good amount of leverage uh, because, and it's much better than the massage cane because if you have the massage cane, then just grab hold right here uh, with both hands. With the massage cane, you're, you're left with just pulling like that. And that gets really tiring really quickly. But even whenever she's pushing right here, that will tend to get tiring with the tricep. Uh, not as quickly as pulling here, but it will get pretty tiring quickly. So the key or the secret to this is to bring this underneath your uh, foot here. And so now that it's right like that, she's able to get it into the shoulder and then the, just the weight of her leg as she's leaning back will provide all of the pressure that she needs. So bring it back a little bit further. There you go. And then just lean back. And that, that's basically like having an elbow in your shoulder, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's easy to do. Like I literally will sit here and do this for two hours because I have been playing guitar for 20 years. I have a ton of tension that's built up throughout here. And so sometimes I'll sit and watch a couple episodes of Star Trek and just work something out, uh, work, work out the, the entire area for a couple hours. Uh, and so you're welcome. I've just given you uh, a, an amazing excuse to watch TV and actually be productive. So uh, we're going to be getting into all these different areas here using this. But once you want to get more into the front of the trapezius, because uh, like she's able to get to the back part that's kind of like the, the tortoise shell aspect of it, if she wants to get to the front section, like this part right in here, um, go ahead and come right there. And then she's going to bring this right hand up here and then the same, the other one right over here. So she's helping to guide with it and then she's pushing down and then there we go. And then so she's going to push down with this and then back with it as well. And then so that way she's able to get into the front aspect of the trapezius. You go down and then back into it. And then if you want to create it even more, uh, so she's down and then she's pulling back and then twist the head to the right. There you go. Feels good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sweet. So uh, she can get all along just the top portion there. And uh, you can also get into the neck with this as well. It is possible you can play around with it, but I'm going to show you a different one that I prefer over this. So that's that one. This is, I, I use this about 80% of the time. I'm gonna show you how to be thorough uh, and use everything, but this is my go-to. The other one that is used uh, probably about 20% of the time. I mean, that, that, this one, uh, I, I use both of these two 95% of the time. Uh, this one I use a little bit less because that one's much more versatile. But with this, you just open it up, place it, along the sides of the neck. There you go, and then grab hold. And then with that, you're able to get both sides of the neck real good. So she's just gonna clamp down. And uh, you're, you're doing more so of a uh, static compression. And with that, uh, you, you just place the pressure on there, breathe into it, sort of like a release or pressure release valve. And so just push in, 
take a deep breath in, allow it to relax. And then so on this part, uh, this is how we get to the back of the neck muscles. We already, we've already gotten the side and in order to get to the back, we, she'll place the pressure right here and then she's going to push forward and then also open it up as well. So she's grabbing the, the thing and she's opening it up as she's pushing forward with it. And then so that way that's going to help to open the, ver uh, open the muscles away from the vertebrae. Everything's like kind of, uh, whenever it contracts, it's coming towards the vertebrae. And whenever you, if, in order to release it and elongate uh, the muscle, you want to go away from the vertebrae. So that really helps out. You can also like apply pressure and kind of go up with it as well. Cool. And then so that's how you be really thorough with it. Uh, and then the one caveat that I will have for you is whenever you're at the base of the skull like this, uh, there is a, uh, there's an artery that runs through here. And so if you're putting a lot of pressure like right on the base of the skull, that uh, you can run the risk of clamping down on that artery. So if you start to feel a little nauseous or uh, if you get a little lightheaded, then just you know take that off real quick and move slightly to a different uh, position. There's a lot of good work to be done in here. There's so much tension that builds up in the occipitals while you're working, especially if you like come forward and you're on the computer like that. There's a lot that builds up right there, and if you can just work it for a couple minutes uh, after you're done working or before bed, uh, it will provide so much relief. But just you know be be mindful of that artery. And next up, we have the Theragun. This is probably the most expensive one that there is. Uh, they, they run for upwards of $300, but you can get a different kind for like $75 that pretty much does the same thing. It's not quite as nice, but it'll get the job done. Uh, and you, it, This is a topotment style or, or percussive uh, kind of machine. So it's it, it will help but it leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, I would personally rather have the body back buddy because you can do deep tissue kind of work and really like uh, smooth out the muscle knots. Whereas this is just going to provide more blood flow and uh, it doesn't really break up any adhesions or anything like that. It just like, it stimulates, stimulates blood flow and I'm really not sure what else it would do besides that. It could kind of like tenderize the muscle, I, I suppose. Um, but yeah, you, you'll find some relief from it, but make sure this is not your only tool. And so... Got it on here. Go. And then so she'll just take that and you don't need to really like push in. Uh, and so come right along in here. So, so you don't need to like push in. You can just let this thing do its work. Uh, it, it provides plenty of pressure as it is. And then if you need to get to the back section, uh, you grab hold like this, twisting around like that. And then with that, she's able to get all the way to the back. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, it's, it's pretty invigorating. These things are great. And really, you, you can do this everywhere. You can do it on, on the entire body. Uh, and, and it's just, it's, it's pretty simple. You just uh, spend a couple minutes with it. Cool. And then, okay. that's, that's enough of that. <laughs> I'll let you have some fun with that later. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, so to get to the neck, uh, rather than using the body back buddy, I prefer this one. I feel like I can get a little bit more precise and it's got this rubber thing on it, whereas the body back buddy is just straight plastic. I find that to be a little bit uh, unforgiving when it comes to the like really thin neck muscles. And so just grab hold like this. And uh, we, with using that, she's able to get into the side of the neck muscles and be real precise with it. Uh, with the other one that had the little knobs on the side, like you can get pretty good with it, but if you're wanting to like get to the front section here, like it, it's, it's hard to use that. So uh, you don't want to go like right on the trachea, but just coming over to the side, you can like come back down into it. You want to be really careful in this section because there are nerves coming out. So anytime that you feel like tingling, numbness, burning, 
cold, any any kind of things that uh, like that, you're probably pushing on a nerve. So don't don't just drill in. You want to go very slowly, feel around, and if you if you find a good spot, like there's one right in here, where if you push in slowly, it will send pressure to the back of the shoulder, and a lot of uh, shoulder tension is actually coming from right here. And so once you can find that, you can find a lot of relief. But, uh, and so just, yeah, if you, if you feel like you're on a, a blood vessel or a nerve, just be very careful uh, to not, not go too deep too quickly. And that way you can just have that sensory acuity to make sure that you're safe while you're working in this. This is a very vulnerable area, but it's, it's worth learning how to work inside. And are you just doing like little circles? Or? Yeah, so uh, you can do little circles or, uh, and, and generally whenever I'm doing that, like you do, you'll go very slowly in and then you can do circles, but also I like to just place pressure on it and then just take a deep breath and let that tension just release on its own. You know, do that a couple times and then do a couple circles, move a little bit to the side and then do that again. You can also increase it by tilting the head over to the right so that while you're in it, so you're like pinning it down and then you're stretching it out. Cool. And then if, uh, if she's getting tired like this, bring your hand over and then she can double up to where you know, you're, you're, you're pulling it, you're pushing in with that hand, but then you double up and you're pushing with this one as well. So that way you're not using so much, um, so much strength or energy with just that one arm. Sweet. And then, so I, I generally only use this on the neck, but you can use it on the hands. You can use it along and the wrist and everything. But I, I tend not to do that because I can just use my elbows along in here and uh, that I have a little bit more uh, more sensitivity with my skin so I would prefer to use that if possible but just like getting in here with the fingers that gets tiring really quickly so I, I like to use this uh, tool All right and then this right here is amazing for the calves and you just place it uh, so we're just going to do one calf at a time. Yeah, there you go. And then you just roll it out. I mean, it's, it's very simple. When you find a section that's particularly tight or sore or whatnot, you can just like put that, that static compression on there and breathe into it. Or you can just roll it out and just like mash it out like that. If you don't have one of these, you probably have a bread roller and it does the exact same thing. And so that way, I mean, this does just as much good as any massage that you're going to get. Mo mostly when you get a massage, somebody's just going to be like doing some effleurage strokes. You can do that for free with this guy right here. Cool. So you can do that along there. You can do it along the quads. Oh, wow. That's really good. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And then same thing for the hamstrings, you can get up under here. And then you can twist out this way to get into the adductors. There you go, nice. Cool, so that's how you take care of the calves, the quads, and the hamstrings, very simply. Okay, and then come to laying down and then put your back right on that. So, yeah. And then there you go to where you're like right at the bottom of the ribs. Oh. Okay. Okay, a little bit further down. There you go. Okay. And then uh, interlace your fingers behind your head. There you go. And then just lean back into it. You know, I usually get a back pop with this because like once you get right, right where it's on the, the rib section, uh, I don't really find that it feels so good on the low back because it tends to dig into the spine. But as long as you're right along the, the ribs, then it, it feels fantastic. I think this is my least favorite one. <laughs> uh, what makes, why do, you, why do you not like it? I don't know. It's just, it does 
not feel... Are you feeling it like right there? I'm feeling it all over. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm wanting it to be like right about here. Is that where it's at? Um, oh, the foam roller itself? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Like this? Yeah. Oh, that's much better. There you go. See, she had it too low. It was on the low back, and so it's not really comfortable right there. Once she put it on the ribs, it opened up, and she loves it now. Cool. Uh, so you can use it along the back like that. I, I, and, and what she was doing was just more of the static compression. Uh, so lay back into it, and then uh, bend the knees a little bit. And then with this, she's going to uh, thrust her hips off of the ground and then roll up and down with it. There you go. Go slowly. And then she can kind of tilt her uh, body side to side. That way she can start to get into more of the external rotators. Uh, she can get into the lats. And then also, oh, you're doing great. Oh, okay. you're, you're I was good. like, how do you rotate side to side? Well, so you will uh, rotate the, just the body, not these, but the torso the, over to the left. There you go. And then bring this arm up and out, and then uh, come up onto your side here. Like? <laughs> yeah, to where the side here is on the actual foam roller. Oh, okay. There you go. Nice. And then... Yeah. You got it. And then again, thrusting the hips up. And that way she's able to really work into the lats. There you go, nice. That's it. I, I mean, it's, it's pretty intuitive. It's, it's not too hard, but it's just like if you have a bunch, if you have sore lats after a good workout, uh, this thing does wonders for getting in there. Uh, so. That's that. And this is basically a foam roller. It's, it's a trigger point kind of different one, but you can also just get a, a basic foam roller and it'll, it'll do the same thing. And then so this one, I like this one so much more than this because it, with it, you're able to get it right along into the spine. Uh, and so the spine will, uh, will go in this little divot here and these will be right along the erectors. And then so you'll come down. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, come all the way down. And then have this right along your spine. There you go. Okay, and then uh, let yourself go all the way down into it. Okay, and you have both of those like right along the spine. It's not like digging into the spine. I think so. Yeah. Good. And then so she'll do the same motion to where uh, well, she'll have these bent and then have the hips thrusted up a little bit. And with that, she's able to kind of roll up and down. I typically don't just roll with this. I'll find a spot and then I'll just sit on it. You just sit, take a deep breath and let it relax into it and do that pressure release. Once you sit there for a couple, uh, a couple breaths, then you'll roll up a little bit more and get to the next section and then do the same thing. It can, you can take five to 10 minutes just to go up and down the whole back. Uh, and with that, you can be real thorough and take care of all that excess tension that builds up from just like sitting and being erect. Um, this thing is my favorite for taking care of the low back uh, pain and tension. Okay, so we're good there. All right. And then this right here is called a Ben's block, and uh, it's, it's Ben Benjamin. He's the one who created this. Uh, so it has three different sections. Each one is increasing intensity. Uh, and so you don't really necessarily need this because you can just use this guy right here to dig into these areas. But I just, I find that sometimes I prefer to use this on the occipital region. So uh, come laying down all the way. And then she's just gonna have this right on the base of her skull. Yeah, here out like that. There you go. And then with that, she's gonna let her head just like drop down into it and relaxing into right at the base of the skull. 
Uh, and then you can rotate your head a little bit over to the side and she's able to get in there. So just like kind of fish around and find the areas. Um, this, this makes it so much easier because you're just using your, your, the, the weight of your head to do the work rather than having to drill in with your hands with the other hand tool. Cool, and she's having a blast. <laughs> All right, that's that. And uh, this one right here, this is a wood ball, but you can also use a lacrosse ball. A tennis ball is a little softer if you need to warm up into it. Golf ball is even more precise. Uh, and I really like to use this for the, uh, the glutes, especially like the piriformis in that region. You just place it right underneath and let your body do the work. Uh, so you can just kind of like go back and forth. You can lay all the way down and get into it. Uh, and so, yeah, she's, she's just sliding back and forth. That works. You can also just do the, the basic uh, static compression, which I tend to like to do with these. And then, so come over onto your side to where it's right here. There you go. Yeah, like lay all the way down and have it right on your side. There you go. Nice. So with that, uh, you're able to get into the IT band a little bit. That's, uh, that's where it connects to up there. I love this, this part. Let's see, you have it here, and then just lay all the way down. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and once, once she started laying all the way down, it really got the pressure into that side of the hip. And so you're, you're able to do so much good therapy here. This is basically like somebody just taking their elbow and driving it into the side of your hip. You can either pay somebody 65 to 80 to 100 bucks an hour to do this, or you can just take some time and do it alone at home while you're watching TV or listening to a podcast. So it's free and it's enjoyable if you mix in some kind of entertainment. Cool, so that's that. And then last up is just a little something you can do with your feet. So come to sitting right here. Uh, so this is like a little knobby roller thing and you just place it underneath the feet. And uh, same thing that we were doing with the other roller, she's just gonna find a spot and then just sit on it and let it relax into it. Uh, if, she, if she wants to get a little deeper, she can stand up, you don't need to do that. But if you stand up on it, then you can put even more pressure on it. I tend to like to use the ball as well because it's not quite as intense. Uh, th this thing, it's, it's almost like it's angry when it's working on you because it's just so pinpoint. Uh, so I tend to use the ball and if I need to get uh, even more work done, if I really want to go deep, then I'll use that thing as well. Now for our grand finale. A foot massager along with something that massages the low and the mid back. Uh, and so it, it provides so much relief. Uh, it does do the neck a little bit, but because I have those other tools that are able to get in there, I find that I'm just, I'm able to do so much better work with those that I tend not to use this too much. Uh, but go ahead and have a seat. And it's really pretty self-explanatory. I just kind of want to show you how she's getting in here. Uh, she's got her feet in. She's got that turned on. And then this thing has a little knob here to where she's able to like kind of guide it up and down. And it's just providing that petrissage motion. It's really kneading into the muscle. And uh, as long as she doesn't hit her spine, she's gonna have a ball. So it's, uh, it's really good. I, a, a lot of people get uh, tension that will build up in the low back because they, they've spent so much time driving or uh, time on the computer. And uh, so you can, you can either pay a massage therapist uh, once or twice a month to work this stuff out, or you can pay a machine once. And I've had these for 10 years and I use them quite often. So it's a lot cheaper, uh, more economical way to take care of yourself. Cool. And so she's just gonna have fun with this for a while and uh, I'll see you on the next video.